circus has erected its tents in the heart of the town, then such a market square as this becomes for a few days a world apart. The big top, the stables for the horses, the cages for the wild beasts, and of course the artists' caravans. Artists who for the most part have been born and bred in the circus, such as this family troupe of Danish springboard acrobats. Yes, the performance is being televised too. The cameras follow the acrobatic feats with amazing closeness. So not only the few hundred people here, but also the many thousands watching at home are able to see the wonderful things that are happening here under the big top. Even at home, they're able to see how high he jumps and how he comes down. But such a television jump through the ether is naturally not so simple. And if, for example, we were to ask Reef Free here, do you know how television works? Then, yes, I thought as much. Let's ask our acrobat. Hello, I say. Would you do that once more? And then will you stop just for a moment, halfway through? Grand. We'll go and have a look and see how it is that you can see the same picture at home. This is what the cameraman sees, but between this camera and your set, a lot happens to this little picture. First of all, it is projected via one of these four lenses onto a small transparent screen. This screen we find located in the, wait for it, image iconoscope. It is the electrical television eye, the great invention by which television has become what it is. The image of the acrobat falls on this transparent screen. And the effect of this is that electrically charged particles fly off from the rear of it onto a target plate. We call these particles electrons. They're invisible, but if we could see them for once, then we should be able to call this an electrically printed picture of our acrobat. Now we will send this picture off to the TV transmitter. To do this, we use what is called an electron gun, a rather dangerous sounding name for a perfectly innocent instrument. This is our gun and it fires a continuous stream of electrons at the target plate. We can imagine the stream to be like this. Now, a property of the target is that it cannot hold its electrical charge, in this case the picture of the acrobat, if it is struck by a stream of electrons. If we enlarge a section in the center of the picture, for example, so, and we direct the beam of electrons into the middle of it, then this happens. The target has now lost its electric charge and has become neutral. But where has this little bit of electricity gone to? To find out, we must take a peep at the back of our target. The tiny electric charges are beating a hasty retreat through this wire. But where to? Well, we'll see that in a moment. First, fill in the gap that has been left. It isn't very nice to look at. That's it. Just a moment ago, we have fired the electron beam from the gun at the center, but we can, of course, also begin in the bottom right-hand corner and proceed from right to left, line by line, to the top. We now scan, as it is expressed, line after line, and in this way chase all the electrical charges off in a nice orderly procession through the wire which leads them to the TV transmitter. These charges are larger for the lighter part of the acrobat and smaller for the dark part. When these electric charges arrive at the transmitter, they are amplified and directed upwards into the mast. And when they have got up there, then you should be able to imagine that they come out like this. These rings flash swiftly through the ether and arrive at your TV aerial. There, the entire process is exactly reversed. The electric charges come inside and pass via aerial and wire to your set. Such a TV set is in itself another technical masterpiece that we ordinary people are scarcely able to comprehend. Lots of tubes, coils, resistors, connections and what have you, compactly built together to form this impressive power station. Let us now trace back step by step exactly what has happened with our acrobats. 
But perhaps there's something you'd like to know. Now look, when the signal has gone in, it is first amplified, and that happens in this part. Here, the signal is first given the full treatment, and then it makes this journey. You see that a number of tubes and components are not visited, but these serve for the sound, and we won't concern ourselves about that, otherwise very soon we won't know whether we're coming or going. After this journey, the signal actually arrives at the picture tube of the set, but it doesn't know yet whether it has to turn left or right, or start at the top or the bottom. Briefly, it hasn't a clue. In order to get this right, we pass it at the same time through a filter, as it were, so that only the black balls, the so-called synchronization signals, are left over. These we dispatch to the synchronization department. This learned sounding component we find, with others, in the caged part of the set. Its function is to ensure that the signal is deposited in the correct order and at the proper place on the picture tube. That black signal is now separately dispatched to the picture tube, and there, dead on time, that is to say, each 15,000th part of a second, it catches up with its black other half, which was sent there by a direct route. And the meeting, for that's what it amounts to, happens precisely at the end of each line. In this way, line after line is scanned in precisely the correct order, precisely in the correct place. We are showing you only a few parts of this television receiver. Never, however, could this set have been created in its peerless form had there not been the newest materials such as Ferrex Cube and Ferrex Dure to make all this possible. Due to these, everything can now happen in the picture tube of the television receiver in exactly the reverse order to what we've just seen in the television camera. The signals come into the tube and there they are fired onto the screen with a similar sort of electron gun. This screen is covered with a substance which gives off light when it is struck with a beam of electrons. This beam now makes precisely the same movement as in the television camera and places all the charges in the form of light and dark in the proper sequence next to and below each other. Seen from above, it looks like this. Look, there's our acrobat, whom we so rudely interrupted in his work. But of course, this beam doesn't really travel at such a snail's pace. In reality, it moves so quickly that the whole picture is completed in exactly one twenty-fifth of a second. If the pace were to be less, for example, four per second, then you'd get this effect. With 12 pictures per second, this. But with 25, the acrobat at last reaches his top form, and this is how you get it at home. Not only as an accomplished acrobatic feat, but also as a polished technical one. <laughs>